Hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dansfish.com and today I'm going to show you some fish that we haven't been able to get pictures of. I'm a little behind on getting pictures taken and put up on the website. So I have a lot of fish that are awesome that people are like, I have no idea what that looks like and are asking for pictures. So I'm going to go around and do some quick video, show you what the fish look like so, so you know what you're looking at. <laughs> and um, I, I'm hoping to have some pictures up soon if not by the time this video comes out so here's a tour of the fish that don't have pictures yet all right let's start with these this is microposilia picta uh, very unflatteringly called the red swamp guppy um, they're not a guppy they're not an endler they're a completely different genus really uh, hard to find interesting little wild type live bear and that is their natural color. They are this nice red and black combination uh, in nature. Really nice looking fish. This is the tank of males down here. And then up here we have a tank of uh, mostly females. There's a few males mixed in there. I'm very excited to have these. This is a fish I've seen pictures of a lot of times. And this is my first time getting them. It's, it's hard to find these uh, in an industry quantity that are, you know, available at, in the numbers that I can bring in to make the business make sense. So, so I'm really glad that I was able to find these and they seem to be doing really well. We've uh, run them through dewormers a couple times and we examined them a couple days ago and saw no more signs of worms or anything. So I think they're ready to go. If you know anything about me, you know, I love killifish. My favorite group of fish ever are killifish. What is a killifish? It's basically a live bear, like a guppy or a platy or um, a molly. But instead of having live young, they retained the egg laying reproduction strategy. So uh, a while ago, this family branched off. Some of them started having live young and the rest kept laying eggs. And this is the result of the ones that kept laying eggs. Absolutely stunning, fiery little fish. These are an annual species out of Brazil. This is a Hypsolebius picturatus. And picturatus is not a bad name. They certainly do look like a pitcher. Like look how absolutely beautiful these are. And they're easy. These eat flakes, they eat pellets. They really like frozen bloodworms and brine shrimp and other foods like that. But, but they'll eat standard food and they'll, uh, you know, they're, they're easy to take care of these guys. So Hypsolebius picturatus. So thrilled to have a beautiful group of these. Okay, these are a platy, but they're kind of a special platy. These are a liar tail platy, which is not something you kind of ever see. A lot of them have a higher fin, but the main thing on them is that liar tail. And some of them it's more gesturing towards a veil tail. And these are a Mickey Mouse strain, although a couple of them don't have, you know, strong Mickey Mouse spot on the back by the tail there. But look at the tail on these guys. Um, I have no idea how well this line is set or anything. I've never seen wire tail in mollies, or I'm sorry, in platies. So it's, it could be a, quite a new thing, at least it is for me. So if you breathe these, I'm not sure what percentage will have the wire tail gene, just to be perfectly honest, but some will. And I think it could be the start of a really neat strain of fish working with these. Okay, here is a hill stream loach we were able to get in recently. These are, this is the first time I've seen these guys. We're not exactly sure what they are, but we did speak with a hill stream loach expert. And the best we can come up with is Gastromyzon CF Lepidogaster. So they, they appear to be closely related to Lepidogaster. These are big, these are four or five inch fish. They kind of look like a giraffe to me, like a, a giraffe hill stream loach, I guess. I, I wouldn't call them that. Almost all of them are doing great. There's two I'm worried about. This guy here, see kind of how his spine juts out? He's just underweight. There's two that are underweight, but the rest of them are looking fantastic. Like, look at this guy. So that's, if you're looking for a, a big, super rare hill stream loach, Gastromyzon CF Lepidogaster. Hey folks, I'm going to do that thing as YouTubers do and say, if you like this, take a moment to subscribe and like the video. We're trying to grow this channel and your help would be most appreciated. Thank you. 
I wasn't planning on showing this so I didn't clean the glass on this tank, but I've got to show you this pile of coolie loaches. <laughs> Look at that. Look at them going for the food. Oh, that is awesome. Just a big squiggly pile of coolie loaches. Excited to eat. It's dinner time. Okay, down here we have a group of stirby quarries, but they're not your everyday stirby quarries. These are the albino stirby quarries. And what sets them apart from your normal albino quarries, which are probably Aeneas, may, maybe Paleotis, is they retain the orange on the fins. So stirby quarries have a nice orange coloration, and these albinos retain that, which is kind of cool. Makes them a neat looking albino quarry. And on top of them, we have some um, albino red metal lace guppies. Really gorgeous guppy. Looks like we have mostly males, which I guess that's good. That's where the color is, but it makes it a little harder to breed. We have a few females, but, but not many, mostly males. I guess we'll knock out a few guppies. Um, these are the tiger half moon guppies. Another really pretty variety. Here's the Japan Blues. I love these. I love the top and bottom sword. And they remind me of the uh, gold blues, but you know, with a nice solid blue color. So if you want a sky blue kind of iridescent fish, um, be hard to beat these guys, I think. Japan Blue, double sword or liar tail perhaps, guppies. These are the blue metal lace guppies. And the colors on these guys. We have a great sex ratio on these, so for breeding, we can hook you up with nice pairs on these. Next to those is another variety of, of the metal lace, but these are the yellows. So those were the blues, these are what the yellows look like. Yellow metal lace guppy. What I like about these, besides the neat little filigree kind of lacy pattern, is how it contrasts with the darker coloration on the fish's body. I think that sets it apart really nicely. I like that contrast. Blue dragon guppies. Got to show you these just because they look awesome. We've got reds, greens, and blues. I don't think we have any yellow dragons right now, but that would be cool. We got three. Three ain't bad. Here's a group of blue topaz guppies. They're in there with a whole bunch of CPDs. Nice white and sky blue fish. Here are the red metal dragon guppies. There's so much color, so much iridescence, like your eye never gets bored looking at a red metal dragon guppy. There's so much to see. This is the Melanotania marisai that Johnny took home and, to breed. And um, what's interesting about them is they, while he had them, they developed into a little bit of a different color phase than the ones we have normally. Normally the ones we have are kind of a bright yellow orange coloration on the fins and body and the uh, neon stripe when they display, when they flare. These have developed a darker red. So this is more of a red colored Marisai. So the hobbyist bred and ra raised ones on the website are these, the more red ones. And the standard ones are kind of the yellow orange. I like them both, but um, just thought I'd show you the different variety. If you're enjoying this content, you might be just geeky enough about fish to like fish live streams. And if you want to join a fish live stream, we do one every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, that's 9 Eastern in the Dance Fish channel, and you're welcome to join us live. Fish Geeks Unite. A new variety of Veil Tail Sword Tail. Look at the amazing fins on these. It's crazy. These, these varieties they're coming out with on these Veil Sword Tails. This is the white. Sometimes they call them Platinum White. Veil Tail Sword Tail. And something to know about this fish is it's only the females that develop that veil. The males look like a normal sword tail. They probably have a high fin, but the tail has an, a normal sword on it. And it's not extended like, like the tails of these. Oh man, these are stunning. Like all the veil tail sword tail varieties I've seen so far remind me of a critter out of Fantasia, that Disney animated movie. 
They've got the, that scene where the fish are swimming around in the pond. That's what these remind me of, those ultra long fins. Okay, here's a fish you don't see every day. This is a baddis, but a different species. This is baddis ruber, the red spot baddis. And they're in here with another fish you don't ever see. These are the shadow tooth carps, these little live bears here. That is an extremely rare little fish. I think we have two pairs of them. There's the female up top there. There's the male right there. So baddis ruber and shadow carp. And there's also some anchor cats in there, but we're not gonna see those unless we drop some food in. Here's another one that's difficult to find. This is the black morpho tetra. Really stunning little tetra out of South America. These spawn very differently than your normal egg scatter. These actually build a little nest and guard the eggs. So the male will protect the eggs in a little cave. Nice blue spangles across that black stripe. Beautiful little nano fish, hard to find. And this group is doing excellent. They're eating dry and prepared foods just fine. We also give them uh, baby brine shrimp and things like that to supplement the diet. But the black morpho tetra or I don't know, black hummingbird tetra, maybe they're sometimes called. Uh, Whitesman eye is the species name. Black darter tetra, they have lots of common names, but it's the Whitesman eye species. Hard to find these guys. Yeah, look at those spangles on that one. That one is showing us purdy. That's right, you walk that catwalk, gorgeous. Just wanna wait for it to turn again. Yeah, oh, looking good. Okay, here's two species of tetras. One we all know and love, the, the blue kochu tetra. That is a beautiful sky blue iridescent tetra. The other one in here is a new one. This is Hyphesobrichon epicurus. Or epicaris, maybe? Um, they call it the red tetra, which, you know, doesn't tell you much. <laughs> There's a lot of tetras that have red in them. But anyway, it's a new species. Um, hasn't been around very long and we were able to get a nice healthy batch in. So if you like rare kerosens, um, Hyphesobrichon epicaris is one to look at. Lots of folks have been asking for um, footage of these. This is the blue crebensis. So just a different color variety of your common crib, pelvic acromus pulcher. So let me get in there close so you can see what they look like. I mean, they're hardy, they're super easy, they're eating everything. Um, I, I think this is gonna be a very easy fish to keep and breed. So if you want something besides your, you know, common everyday pelvic acromus culture, here's the blue variety. Okay, here is a, a variety of endlers that I don't see around very often, and I think is one of the more pretty ones because of that nice contrast with that bright red against the black. And then they have like iridescent spots up on their back as well. This is the black flame endler. And this fish I think is actually named well. A lot of common names are like misleading. <laughs> you look at the fish and you're like, I don't know. That doesn't look like super spectacular rainbow red emperor, you know? But this black flame, I totally get it. Black body, flame tips on the tail and the fins. Yeah, this one makes sense. Nice batch has been doing amazing for us. So if you like endlers and want something, you know, that you don't see every day, here's one to look at. Okay, these are our Corridors C-102. The Lepardus, I think is how you say the species name. Now we, they just got out of quarantine and got put in this tank yesterday. And they've been rooting around in this sand ever since and absolutely stirring it up like crazy. So, so yes, the tank is cloudy. In a couple days, that will have all gone away. That will all be washed out. But right now, yes, it's, there's a lot of cloudiness in that tank with them. But look at these fish, they're doing fantastic. They went through quarantine in flying colors. They're eating like crazy. And I think they're gonna do really, really well for you. Corridor C-102, which I think is Corridoris lepardus. Okay, this is a new Hillstream loach to us. I don't know the species name. They call it the Vietnamese tiger hillstream loach. I don't know which scientific name it is yet. Still trying to figure that out. But they're one of the longer, slimmer types of hillstream loaches without going into the lizard body shape. They aren't that slim. They still have that, you know, classic suction cup figuration, but they're long and long and slim. And they do have a real bold tiger stripe pattern on them. 
these are these have been good for us uh, no issues they eat pellets and stuff just fine they really like a treat of frozen bloodworms but uh, algae wafers and big like massive or monster pellets no problem feeding these guys at all hey folks if you want to support us but you're like i don't need any new fish right now that's fine check out our link below to the aquarium co-op where you can find food filters lights dry goods um, the supplies you need to keep fish and if you click that link below and purchase from them we'll get a little piece of the action which is super helpful Okay, here are the Bleeding Heart Platys, a.k.a. Um, Coral Zebra Platys or Red Tiger Platys. There's so many different common names for these guys. But these, I think, are the best I've seen. I've tried lots of suppliers. Mostly they come in inconsistent and a little bit muddy. These came out of Israel. And this farm, this breeder, has nice, consistent fish. So I think this will really make you happy. Nice oranges and dark reds against a whitish to kind of orangish background depending on if it's male or female or dominant or subdominant and all you know all those factors but they're all pretty i can't remember if i've gotten around to showing these in a video before or not so i'm going to just take a moment with them this is uh Giardinus metallicus the black chinned live bear this colony is doing fantastic they're having babies and the babies are growing up just fine we haven't had losses. There's like one or two little skinny ones that just, you know, never quite recovered from, from when they were first shipped. But besides that, it's been a rock solid batch. So if you like small live bears with lots of personality and I think cool color, like look at this guy. Look at his nice little black Frenchman's chin. I think that's so cool, that black chin that they get. If you like wild type sword tails, I've got a treat for you. This is Zephophorus signum. One of the ones you almost never see, at least I almost never see. Maybe you're like, hey, I breed those. I've got tons of them. I see them every day. But in general, I think this is one that you almost never see. Really neat, unique sword tail. This one comes from nice flowing streams. They want nice, clean water. This batch has been rock solid for us. Those females are gravid. This is a beautiful breeding colony if you like rare wild type sword tails. And let me see if I can get in on that male. Hopefully he's in focus. Turn for us. There you go. There he is. Part in the front of the glass. It's a little streaked. I, I forgot to scrub that down before I started the video. These are the angelfish from Rio Itaya. So they're a nice wild type angelfish locality specific. And they're in there with Imperial Lapis Tetras. So these guys are blue with nice red on the fins and bold black stripe. And then there's a few sailfin kerosens underneath. But the stars of this tank are these Rio Itaya angelfish. They're doing fantastic for us. I haven't had any issues. I think they'll thrive for you. For those that like Hillstream loaches, here's another rare one. This is Gastromyzon Cileotron. And it's hard to see right now because their tails are down, but their tails are like a metallic iridescent blue. I'm just going to hold the camera here in the hopes that uh, they open their tails up and we can see that blue. Hopefully it's showing up on some of these guys. Let's see if I can get in there. Look at them all chowing down on that food pellet right there. Anyway, Gastromyzon cileotron, another really neat species of hillstream loaches. I'm loving the Hillstream loaches. I hope to get more. There's so many unique varieties out there. We're, we're barely scratching the surface here. This is definitely a neat one. All right, so thanks for joining us for this video. Hopefully that gives you an idea of some of these uh, neat fish we have available that we haven't been able to get photos of yet. Um, I want to thank our customers. Thanks for buying from us. Thanks for helping us stay in business so that I get the privilege of doing the thing I love to do every day. It's, it's amazing. And I love this life. Thanks for making it possible. Everyone who's a member of the uh, Dance Fish channel, thanks for being part of the Fishmonger crew. We'll see you next time. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.